Hey, what's up YouTube? My name is Mike. I'm here today to present to you my latest little project that I've accomplished on my car. It's a car pewter installation with a Mac Mini. Okay, so little overview about the car. 2005 Audi S4 equipped with a 340 horses V8 4.2 liters. This is the car right here. Of course, there's been a few modifications on it, but the biggest one would be inside the car. So why don't we go ahead and check it out. So for the sake of this video, I'll be explaining everything in English today, but for those of you who know me, in Montreal, my langue maternelle c'est français. Before we start, I'd like to thank my buddy Etienne for filming this with me today and helping me out. So uh, let's get it started. So right now the system is booting up. Of course it takes the usual boot time of a Macintosh, anywhere between 30 seconds and about a minute. Um, you don't want to wait that long whenever you get back into your car for the system to boot up. So there's a system integrated in it that will put the Mac Mini to sleep instead of shutting it off. So next time you get back into your car, it will only take a few seconds to uh, turn on. Modified boot logo, of course. <laughs> And there we go. The screen's a 7 inch Lilliput monitor, has a VGA plug and a USB plug for uh, that controls the touch screen. If I open up iTunes and play a song, I've got all the normal applications that a Mac has, Google Chrome, uh, iTunes, I've also added a nice little application called Nocturne for, uh, to put it on night mode, uh, less aggressive lighting when I drive at night. Pretty much all of the equipment is in the glove box. I have my Mac Mini here, built myself a nice little docking station. If ever I need to do maintenance on the Mac, I can take it out and unplug it and very easily plug it back in. Okay, so the Mac Mini didn't output enough um, audio volume, so I had to add up my um, own little gain booster. I have one input and four outputs, so I can control my front speakers, back speakers, and subwoofers all individually. Also, I've added an extension to my power button on the Mac, so in case I need to force a restart on the computer, I can just use this button. I have a USB hub, which is powered. Power comes from my transformer behind my screen, which I will show you in a few moments. And of course, my bypass switch. Switch has three positions. Auto, off, and on. Auto will work with the key, fully automatic with the ignition when you turn it on, the system turns on. Off is the system always off, and on is bypassed to on. So if you look at my key right now, you will notice that there's no key in the system, and therefore turning the system on permanently. All right, so uh, this is one part of the system that I like a lot. It's, uh, of course, um, of my own design. I've converted my cigarette lighter to my volume control right here. Also, I've added two switches here, which I will show you what they're used for as soon as I start a song. So, volume control here. First switch here will completely turn off my amps in the back. So in other words, either I use it as a mute button or to turn off my amps in the back which will suck less juice on my battery and therefore making my system last longer just on the battery. 
The other switch, which I find pretty cool. I figured if I was going to wire some, some wires all the way in the back to the trunk, I was going to add this little thing. If you look at the screen now, it automatically switches to input 2 with the backup camera. And uh, with the, the tinted windows that I have, sometimes at night it can be pretty hard to back up. So I find this thing very useful. So whenever I switch the switch back off, if you look at the screen, there we go, switches right back to the system. If I turn my amps back on. Another thing that I forgot to show you guys is uh, the Bluetooth keyboard that I bought. It has a trackpad for the mouse. So, uh, before I show you the subs, show you my backup camera. This used to be my uh, key lock, which I never used anyway, so I replaced it with the camera, which fitted in the exact same hole. So here are the subs. They're pretty old, but they still work very well. All right, so I built the whole system so it would be very easily removable. All I got to do is pretty much pull the screen out, and I will start a song just to demonstrate what I'm trying to say. Oh, the switch was off. Now she want a photo, you already know though. You only so. live once, that's the model, nigga, yellow, and we got it every day, every day, every day. I be sitting on the I can literally really play. Every day, every day. unplug the screen. Say, can't see him cause the money in the way, real nigga, what's up? And the system will still work. Okay, so, of course I've had to uh, adapt my lily put screen <laughs> to make it fit in order to have enough room in the back. All right. There's a lot of stuff in the back here. There's probably one kilometer long of wire. If I pull everything out, I'll explain into detail what everything does. This is my power bar. There's a lot of components, a lot of uh, different um, things that use power. So, of course, I needed something to control all the power. Of course, the black is the negative, red is my positive. I've added my own um, fuse here just in case the system fails. So, this is the transformer I was talking about. It's uh, Carnetics. It's a CP, well, CNXP 1900. It's specially made for Mac Mini. So if you see here, all the plugs. Basically, this transformer it what is what controls the whole system. It outputs 18 volts, 12 volts, and 5 volts. Also, this is a ground loop isolator to isolate my audio signal from the ground of the car because I had a lot of noise in the system. This is to prevent the noise. This is the plug that I used to uh, tap right into my original Bose sound system. A few extra wires here. It's all in the back, so you don't really see it. Put everything back in place. Like this. I guess somebody's trying to reach me. Okay, and here we go. Everything fits right back in place. Put my screen back in. <laughs> so I've showed you the whole system, now I'm going to show you some cool features that uh, the system can do. Uh, very first feature is uh, my Bluetooth connection to my iPhone. 
So this allows me to have access to internet anywhere I go. It takes a few seconds. If you look at my phone right now, personal hotspot. So if I go to Google Chrome, let's say YouTube. Of course, it's a 3G connection, so it's not as fast as a DSL or cable. But it's still internet in the car, which is pretty cool. Everybody knows that it sucks being stuck in traffic. Well, this is my definition of traffic. There's an option that exists in the Mac that will, instead of connecting to a Wi-Fi network, you can broadcast a Wi-Fi network. I've activated that option right now, and I'm presently broadcasting Wi-Fi. So if you take any device, whether it's an Apple device or any other other stuff, which I won't mention, Windows, you can see that I'm broadcasting my S4 network. You can now see that I'm connected to my S4 network. The little program that I started is called Airfoil Speakers that's uh, in the computer. It allows me to stream music from an Apple device directly onto my Mac. So here's a demonstration. Let's say if I have some, some passengers in my car and they go in their iPod. Start a song. It plays on the phone and then I can select Mac Mini. That's pretty cool. Here's a demonstration of the fully automatic system. Like I said, the Mac is uh, in sleep mode, so it shouldn't take very long. A few seconds, and we're right back in the system. This was the whole system, put a lot of energy in it, took me a lot of time to build, a lot of conception, did it all by myself, I'm very happy with it. Uh, of course, no system is perfect, people have been asking me if I have radio in the car, the answer is no. Uh, when you think about it, who really needs a radio when you have access to a few thousand songs, internet, and YouTube? If, however, I did want radio, I could have added it a nice little box hooked up to the USB that would give me access to AM and FM radio. Also, uh, I gotta say it took me a few weeks to uh, get used to the whole touchscreen system because it can get small at times. Uh, I'm still looking for a front-end software that will make every icon bigger and easier to use, but that's another thing. Um, thanks for watching. Thank you, Etienne. Merci. And uh, if you have any questions, you can write to my email address, ndtech.mtl at gmail.com.